Talking about bows, talking about tight, talking about dancing. We ain't talking about that, but I'm going to talk about it. Recently, it has been revealed. It has been finally revealed. The Bergheim June 2023 lineup. And I am over the moon because it feels like it's come a little bit before the date is meant to come. I have a feeling it's usually the six on the sixth day the month before they usually put out the lineup it feels like or maybe later i'm not really too sure but either way happy it is here and the lineup is very very interesting um so far from what i've been able to kind of glean a lot of cool people that i definitely want to go see but if you're looking for a real barnstormer of a flipping Bergheim lineup with loads of big names and whatnot this isn't a one for you there were far bigger names in like you know previous months that you could have gone to this one is definitely for the heads it feels like but there is still some surprises that i'm like huh how the diggity diggity duke did this person end up playing on there the first one i want to mention before we get into the ones i love is the ones i'm not really too fond of is this lineup here on the thursday so it seems like it's a new night they're putting on maybe it's like more catered towards people that are going to be performing live i'm not really too sure or maybe this is just what they usually do in the sour room they put on nights on thursdays but this is an event it's called weirdos with um free e's because you know if you want to be a weirdo you gotta really state it you're a weirdo and it features a person called abyss x a person called miss parker a person called Shake, and then it's got this person here, Chippy Nonstop. Just, you know, just for pure, you know, pure honesty sake, this woman must have the best agent in the world because the clips I've seen of her playing and her persona that she puts out online, I'm sure it's a different, you know, behind the scenes and when you meet her in person, blah, blah, blah. I'm sure she's a lovely person. Not really, you know, discussing that. Just more discussing the artistry or lack thereof. How does somebody who is demonstrably terrible at what they do, in my opinion, from the clips that I've seen her play, it's just terrible. The music is terrible. The mixing is terrible. The taste is terrible. Um, the dancing is terrible. Everything about it is terrible. Even the looks. I know I'm not someone to flip and try and discuss a woman's physical attributes. That's not what I'm saying. But the outfits themselves are pretty crap, in my personal opinion. Not the most, um, um, I don't know, just not the greatest outfits behind the deck. So all of that smaz and pizzazz, all of that lack of rhythm, all of that lack of taste, but still you end up reaching the heady heights of playing in the illustrious space that is Bergheim, which makes me think she even must have an incredible agent or booker or i might be the one that's a dummy and she legitimately is as amazing as this booking would you know, lead you to believe because you'd imagine being booked at Burkhain is sort of like your you know it's sort of like a confirmation um that you are doing really well that you are amazing at what you do that the scene has recognized you for your talents and your expertise and this is now the stamp that you need to say hey you're official right you're legit you're really good you're sick you're nang keep doing what you're doing i'm not really too sure if this person needs a new encouragement i'm not gonna lie because of the clips i've seen so far it's just been horrendous i can't imagine paying card hold money to go and see this person play it will be an absolute horror but again another part of me thinks you know what that's part of the beauty of Bergheim, and that's part of the beauty of that big space because i feel like if that club was anywhere else in the world they would only book the biggest of the biggest. They wouldn't bother trying to, you know, bring up some smaller quote unquote acts. They wouldn't um, try and foster in um, and platform newer labels. They wouldn't take a chance on people. They'll just book the same old top 50 resident advisor DJs of all time from the DJ polls on DJ Mag or Mix Mag, whatever you're going to get them and just book them, have, a, have them just recycling through. It'll just be the same old faces. But instead of what they do, they freshen it up always and they're always introducing new and fresh people even if i don't like them i really do approach i really do kind of appreciate that type of approach because it gives people like myself a guy stuck in the doldrums of london somewhere bedroom djing playing in bars for a hundred dollars it gives me the hope that one day <laughs> i too can play there because if that person if fucking chippy non-stop can play there then everyone's got a fucking chance that's my humble opinion on that one but moving back to the absolutely amazing part of the lineup which i think is absolutely stacked um first of all just going to go through quickly the panorama bars because i think the panorama bar rooms are legitimately underrated 
The first one I want to mention is the Panorama Bar Room on Friday, the 2nd of June, which is called Love on the Rocks, which features somebody that I've really been a big fan of, and I'm proud to say this, unabashed fan of Tiny. Um, that whole house sound of like the early 2000s, minimal type thing. Tiny was at the forefront of it. Loads of great productions, loads of great, you know, remixes. And I haven't really seen her play in Panorama Bar or seen her book there in a while. It feels like maybe ever. I'm not really too sure. I'm sure she has played it in the past, but it feels like it's been a while. So with the fact of getting someone like an Oscar Molero that played there, um, you know, a couple of months ago, I think, or last month, and the fact that they're getting Tiny there, it feels like, you know, the scene is healing again. Everything is coming back to life again. So I'm also about that. Of course, uh, Paramita is going to be playing with it being Love of the Rocks. That's going to be sick. Uh, Paramita is essentially like an unofficial resident DJ. So that will be pretty sick. I'm pretty fond of that one. Scrolling down, we go to the Panorama Bar the following weekend, which is on the Friday, the 6th of June. And this is Jack Your Body. And this is another sick, sick, sick lineup. It features Honey Dijon, Luke Solomon, Nix, and one of my favorites who again i discovered courtesy of whore so big up that platform red pig flower red pig flower superb superb so if you want a bit of acid you want a bit of house you want a bit of jack in house you want to just jump around and dance this is definitely the place to go to friday the 6th of june jack your body in para sorry, in panorama bar then the next panorama bar the following week from that is friday the 16th of june which is cream cake and the the reason why I love this is because I don't know anybody on that lineup. I don't know a single DJ on that fucking lineup. There's Zombie. There's someone called Cash Cora. There's someone called Don Kada. Someone called Hannah Diamond. Someone called Monrex. Mon uh, m m sorry, Monren Triple X. Sorry. Someone called One Ton Witch. Someone called XD Eric. This is why I think Bergheim is the best club in the world. Because like I said, any other club in the world that was the Bergheim, they would only book the best of the best DJs and they wouldn't give any up and coming people a chance to play there. It would just be the home of the best of the best. Nothing else, nothing more. And it'll be st it'll obviously run stale after a time, but there'll be no avenue, no opportunity for you to play in such a illustrious venue, in such a great sound system, facilities, legend, great crowd. It wouldn't happen. So the fact that I don't know any of these people is a credit to Panorama Bar and what they do over there. So big up them. Then the following Panorama Bar, which I really do like as well, is this one here, which is Hammer Nights on the 23rd of June. This one's going to be a really good one because it's all back-to-back -back sets, which you don't get too often in panorama bar it feels like a lot of people play there usually on their own but this panorama bar back-to-back -back set is going to be really cool because there's a few label mates playing on here so number one you have bashka playing back-to-back -back with nini h i think that's going to be pretty sick especially considering you know bashka's new kind of ep and whatnot and tunes that have dropped recently then you have Roz, Rosa, Ter Rosa Terenzi back to back with Isabella playing. And then you have Sedef Assi back to back with Bambuno, who I think is going to be, that's probably going to be a standout. Obviously, I'm, I'll be curious to see what Bashka and, and Nindy H do back to back. Um, you know, kind of playing alongside your boss must be a little bit weird. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> but yeah, that might be interesting to see. But Bashka did um, destroy and play really sick at Unfold from what I've been led to believe from browsing social media. People are really big fans of that. And then Sedef Asi, you know, and Bamboo is somebody I've probably been a big fan of. You know, he's got a good social media presence and just generally is a bit of a lad behind the decks anyway. So it's going to be a bit of a vibe. And then we move on. And the final panorama bar of the month is going to be Your Love, which features Calypso Bang, Chima Cesaro, Guinance, Lakuti, and Tamasoma. That's going to be an absolute vibe. There's going to be a lot of love in the air, a lot of disco, a lot of Afro beats, um, a lot of international sounds, a lot of alternative sounds, just really a bright and fresh sort of vibe to kind of go to uh, Panorama Bar 4. So if you are a fan or you're curious about going Bergheim, those are probably some decent nights to go and check out. And then the rest of it, in terms of Bergheim nights, are just all stacked. There's way too many to mention here. Um, the first one on the 3rd of June, you've got Terence Fixema um playing which i'm a big fan of gerd jansen panorama bar on that saturday is going to be sick so big up that one always a good time um the following weekend you have who do i'm who am i a big fan of rod had here i'm really curious to go see i would love to see cormac play at panorama bar as well the disco king mike stars another favorite of mine zombies in miami so already 
you've already got like you know four people that you could go see on that one day the 10th of the 6th that's going to be an absolute slaughter fest then you continue on the 17th you have darwin i'm a big fan of as well um, james rushkin of course uk stand-up uh f the min playing big fan of that one and then who else is um, did no one else on there couple looking for balana are pretty good as well um then what else do you have here? Oh, and then of course the 24th is going to be the one that everyone's going to be probably into because there's a lot of local heroes there that are probably going to bring the crowds, um, especially Freddie K and LOL Snake. Um, they've got a l nice little decent contingent of people out there in Berlin who are big fans of them and just internationally so they're going to be on it. And then of course in Panama Bar, you've got Soft Crash, which is going to be fucking sick. Soundstream, Van Ann, like all of these, like just too many, too many killers to mention on here. But yeah, it's a pretty decent lineup for June. Um, like I said, I think in general, this isn't one that's going to be chock full of like big headliners and stuff, but it is one for the heads. And I feel like if you are wanting to have a real experience of what Bergheim is like, because I'm a bit, I'm a bit caught in two minds because in one sense, going to like a Sylvester, going to like a May Day, going to all these like special occasions that they do. It's quite nice because you get to see the club at its full capacity, right? On its tilt. You get to see people from all over the world, the regulars, um, fellow artists. Like, it's just crazy, right? Inside it. It's flipping goes off. But on the other side of things, too, I think for the first experience, it's probably decent to go to maybe the week after one of those big public holiday events or whatnot. And to re-experience what the real kind of Bergheim is like, vibe-wise. Because you usually get a lot more regulars, there's less tourists, there's more room to move around and dance and shit. And you just get a different sort of vibe and a feel for what you're experiencing. Um, I'm really a big fan of that pride because I feel like the special occasions, they always feel like everybody's going in there with an energy of like, this is going to be my best night ever. This is like my Project X. Where I feel like if you go on like a regular night, people are just going out there like it's a regular night. And they're not putting too much expectation into it. And you can kind of feel it in the atmosphere somewhat. So those are usually the best place to go to so you can pick from literally any of these dates and some of these dates as well look at this especially on the um, the first of the month you've got an event happening in that main building from thursday all the way to saturday basically from thursday till monday morning if you want right you've got an event in saw panama bar burger and panama bar and then that obviously leads on to monday so the june lineup is absolutely stacked absolutely amazing i can't wait to go back again my plan for now is to go back in july that's my kind of plan and maybe go twice. I think going to go in the middle of July because that party cocktail de amour is happening at Club Ost, which is one of the best and legendary sort of club nights they do out there in Berlin. Um, mostly kind of steered towards the queer gay scene, but still I go just for the vibes and it's just generally one of the best disco parties I've been to in a very, very long time, especially because, you know, they don't usually book super big headliners. I think the biggest person they may have booked there might have been someone like a honey or something. Most of it is like friends and family, still legit. It, but it's not like crazy crazy big names so that's always a good time so i'm looking forward to going to that middle of july and then whatever is around i don't really care who's playing else if someone else is playing i'll go but the main sort of uh, mark is to kind of go 